And I felt good just knowing that I helped them feel better about themselves and just seeing how they lit up when they just put on an amazing outfit or mm -hmm. a great pair of shoes. So I was like, okay, well, it, it, I'm having this visceral feeling about it. So that, that has to be something. Hey everyone, this is Amber Key, and you're listening to A Bright Idea Podcast, a show where I sit down with entrepreneurs to hear about the aha moment that launched their businesses. On this week's episode, we're joined by Anitra Bird, owner of Knee Chic. Anitra is a certified personal stylist and image consultant based in the Richmond, Virginia area. Since launching Knee Chic in 2014, Anitra has partnered with retailers and boutiques such as Dillard's, Ann Taylor, and Banana Republic, as well as the Short Pump Town Center to offer the best clothing and accessories for her clients. Anitra's goal is to inspire her clients through her knowledge and her ability to pick out the best clothes and accessories to fit their brand, personality, and personal style. Above all, Anitra thrives to invigorate, build confidence, educate, collaborate, and provide exquisite styling for entrepreneurial, corporate, and everyday life. When I grew up, I come from a family, uh, a large family on both sides. Um, my mom was one of, oh my gosh, how many was it? Um, seven or eight? And and the same for my dad. So it, it was a lot of them. And just growing up with my cousins, we were always playing outdoors. You may not see that a lot nowadays, but growing up, we just had that really close bond with extended family and I loved it. So, and growing up, we, we actually were poor. My family was poor, but we didn't know that because we just enjoyed being children. We just enjoyed life. We didn't know that. We were just like, oh, we're having fun with the family. Um, so I really enjoyed that. But as I got older, my dad was an entrepreneur. Um, he was actually a young father. He was a father at 17, um, when he and my mom had my sister. So he had to grow up early um, because he was a dad. And he was a little resistant with that, you know, And but he came to the point where he knew that he had to um, take care of his family. So he knew he had a skill and that skill was in construction. So, he had been working construction in D.C., in the D.C. area for a while, and he knew that he had that skill. So he went to his his auntie at one point and was like, you know, I want to borrow some money so I can start my own business. So she loaned him the money. Um, of course, he paid it back quickly, probably in less than a year. And he formed his, his company. He had an asphalt paving company. Um, it was very successful here in the Richmond area for many, many years um, before he unexpectedly passed six years ago. Um, but just thrived in growing up. I believe we were probably in middle school when we realized that, you know, we were very blessed. So whatever we wanted, we got, you know, my sister and I we would get our hair done like every two weeks. <laughs> I mean, just throughout, it's like, you know, you think about it now, it's like, okay, your parents, um, pay for you to get your hair done every two weeks, whatever clothing you wanted. They were like, okay, you can get that. Just whatever we wanted, we got. Um, yeah. We were spoiled children. And I think back on that now, and, and I just say we were truly blessed uh, with great parents. They kind of grew up with us because they were young. Um, and a lot of times people will come to our home and they, they'd be like, oh, that's the fun house. We want to go to... Uh, Anitra, my sister, her name's Holly, and she's in the beauty space as well. They'd be like, well, we want to go to their house. They have the fun house, you know, and they're playing like basketball and sports with my dad and just having fun. Mm -hmm. So it was just a great time growing up. But throughout that, um, probably in middle school, high school, I was like, you know, I'm really liking clothes. And, you know, a form of expression, the way you can express yourself through that. And I will backtrack a little bit 
growing up some during my adolescence, I was a tomboy. <laughs> Some people like, you were a tomboy. I'm like, I, I was a tomboy. Well, you grew up in the country and it's like really outdoorsy, I'm assuming. Yeah. Does, it makes sense to me. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, growing up and discovering boys, <laughs> it's just like, well, the tomboy part of me kind of went out. I, I feel like I had sprinkles of it sometimes. I'm like, okay. But discovering boys and discovering me a bit, because, you know, when you're an adolescent teenager, you don't know a lot, even though you think you do. Uh, just discovering what I liked. I was like, I like clothes. I like fashion. I like seeing what the celebrities, the stars are wearing. Um, so I took up that interest. And my dad, he had an interest, too. So my dad's nickname was Gorgeous. <laughs> and then he... He always had a brush with him. He was just constantly brushing his hairs, like, you know, brush my hair, make sure my hair is right, mm -hmm. and making sure that <laughs> his clothes were neat because he was in a gospel group too. So, you know, they're going around singing. He wanted to make sure that he looked right. And we would tease him sometimes because he would iron his jeans. And when he ironed his jeans, sometimes he would put just a, a bit much starch on them. So it's like, oh, you got a lot of start on those. But he was like, I cannot walk out of the house with wrinkled clothes. Yeah. I was like, you're right. You know, even though you may be going, you're on site and you're doing like asphalt construction, he, he still wanted to iron those, those pants. He wanted to look presentable. Was... He did all the time. And my mom, too. She loves to look nice as well. So, you know, we you know, had our thing. I had my thing with, with the wardrobe. And just as time went on, you know, I would style some of the family and, and style some friends or give them advice on what looked look nice on them. So I said, okay, you know, I'm styling myself. Of course, I know what looks good on me, uh, what makes me feel good and, and confident. So I was like, okay, well, maybe... Yeah, I got a little knack for this. Yeah. So I was in corporate space forever. So right out of high school, um, I did go to a, a business school um, where I learned um, legal. I was a, a legal assistant. So I learned that part. I had an interest in, in law. At one point, I thought about, okay, well, maybe I want to be an attorney. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that. And then later on, um, I actually went, to college, online college, and got a degree in psychology. Mm -hmm. I think part of me was like, oh, you never went to college. Maybe that's just something, you know, you want to do. Um, something I wanted to attain, a degree. So mm -hmm. I did that. But I'd been in corporate probably 20 plus years. So I've, did, I've done different things in the corporate world. Um, legal, insurance, um, just different different things in that world. So I learned skills in the corporate world yeah um that you don't learn when you're an entrepreneur but you can take those and apply to your business or you can apply to real life and vice versa um so probably in was it it was 2014 i was like you know i think i want to really explore this you know styling yeah. In, in the styling space. So I did that. I, I went to my local courthouse and I was like, okay, let me come up with my name. Let me get my LLC. Because, you know, that's just one thing you should do when you go into business, whether it's an S Corp or whatever. Um, I decided I wanted to, to do the LLC. And I did that. And when I first started off, um, I was working with a local photographer. She was one of the first who really was thinking about branding in this area, mm -hmm. um, in the Richmond area. So she was a branded photographer. And then I did wardrobe. Um, we had hair, we had makeup. And we did that and we do branding sessions, headshot party. So it, it kind of kicked off from there. After working with her, I worked with her for three, I think it was three years about three or four years and along the way just building up clientele from that 
because it's like, okay, well, I'm working with this this photographer who does branding. And um, at the time, branding was kind of like, oh, people were like, well, what is branding? Again, in the Richmond area. Um, right. So they're, they're catching on more to it. So we could do the branding, the headshots. And from that, you know, having, we had a pretty good roster and just building from there. So once um, we stopped working together, I was able to say, you know, I've been working with this branding photographer, you know, doing the, the wardrobe piece of that, you know, styling them, styling the clientele for the, the branding sessions and for the headshots. Yeah. So that's how it grew from, from there. And to be clear, was this while you were still working in corporate? Yes. So it's, you know, working <laughs> full time for both because sometimes I would leave corporate. It's like, oh, we'll have to go and, and help this client, you know, take a little longer on the, on the lunch break or something to do that or take a day off or whatever it, the case may be. But yes, alongside being in corporate. I, I never really enjoyed corporate. I will say that. It was just something that paid the bills because, you know, at the time I was a single mom. I was a divorced um, single mom. So it's like, you know, this pays the bills. You know, as you probably know, corporate does can pay better um, and, and until you get really get into being an entrepreneur and really making the money that you want to make. but. That's the only reason that I really did that was to sustain and have that stability for my son. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, well, you know, I, I have this stability. I'm going to work on um, what I'm passionate about on the side and, and build that up. And initially I was thinking, oh, I can do this. I can do this on my own. And it's, it's not as easy as you think. And a lot of people, a lot of my entrepreneurial friends and associates, they've done the same thing. They've had, you know, corporate jobs. Um, and this was like their side hustle or their passion as well. And they worked on it simultaneously to build it up to, until they got to the point where they could actually leave and just really work on it full steam. And, and, you know, that's something that, you know, if you have, and I know that you have um, goals yourself um, that you want to attain, that's where you want to be. But it's more common than not that you have to have something that really pays the bills until you build up that base and that clientele to sustain you. From sort of your dad being an entrepreneur and then you having this experience in corporate that you said you learned your these skills that they don't teach you about when you're just a, a business owner um you know what was there sort of an aha moment that led you to starting Nishi that um I would say it was just little things throughout the years again my love for it um, my eye for it, for, you know, dressing myself, of course, and then, you know, the friends and family and something that when I did dress them, I just, I felt better about me and I felt good just knowing that I helped them feel better about themselves and just seeing how they lit up when they just put on an amazing outfit or a great pair of shoes. So I was like, okay, well, it, it, I'm having this visceral feeling about it. So that, that has to be something. It's telling me something if I'm having such a reaction to it. Yeah. And I believe in that when, you know, you have to always remain cognizant of how you feel with things in life. So just like if, you know, you're in corporate, and you dread going to work every day. There's no joy in it. Yeah. So, I mean, you may have to strategize and figure out how you're going to leave corporate, but that's telling you something too. Yeah. When did you decide that this was something that you wanted to do full-time or that you could do full-time? 
Um, it was it over some years, and I think we had this this conversation offline. Um, it, it's not easy being an entrepreneur. It it really isn't. Um, you have those highs and you have those lows, so you do have to be strategic about it. And even when you're strategic about it, you still have um, highs and lows, and it ebbs and it flows at times. So when you're being strategic, if you need, you know, need to leave corporate, um, you make sure you have that plan in place. But sometimes, again, you know, you're going to run into some difficult times. And I just try to be honest about that because, you know, I've had conversations with people and they're like, oh, I see you doing this and doing that. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm putting I'm putting it out there. I'm living my dream and I feel like my purpose, but it's not without some heartache and stress as well. That that goes along with it. So I want to be authentic about that and transparent and, you know, let fellow entrepreneurs know that side of it too. It's definitely yeah. joy. It's definitely joy in it. Um, but there are some pain points too. Yeah. Um I read that you started your company in 2014, and I'm curious, what did business look like back then versus what it is today? Well, um, it definitely took different because I've heard so many transplants say Richmond is cliquish, and I've, I've heard that quite a bit. And I was like, oh, I don't see that because I've been here for so long. I've been here a long time, um, probably 20 plus years. But at one point, I did live in Maryland. (laughs) But when you're first starting out with something, especially when it's something that's not as saturated, you know, it's a lot of photographers. It's a lot of makeup artists. It's a lot of hairstylists. But it's not a lot of um, personal stylists here in this area. So, you know, some people were like, what do you do? (laughs) <laughs> what does that entail? So you're trying to build your business, build your brand, um, get your name out there for people to know what you do. But some people are like, well, I don't need help with that. I know how to dress myself. I had a recent client who said that. She said, well, I don't, I don't need you to tell me how to dress. <laughs> I was like, okay, once I broke it down to her, He's like, okay, well, I am interested. Like, it's not just about that. You know, it's a psychology behind it. It's, you know, the image consulting to the presentation, um, the emotional aspect of it as well. So back then it was just, you know, trying to trying to get my name out there Mm -hmm. and and build up the clientele um, and for people to get to know who I am. So that they would potentially say, okay, well, I'll at least have a conversation with you. Yeah. What, um, tell us a little bit about your clientele. Who are they? So they are, for the most part, professional women, um, whether that's an an entrepreneur, a uh, high-level executive, um, someone in the corporate space, and, you know, the everyday woman. Uh, Going back to making people feel joy and feel confident, that doesn't always come in the form of being in the workplace if you just want to feel better um, personally, you know, it it goes in tandem, just like, you know, the, the image consulting and, and the wardrobe styling, that works together. So mainly professional women. But again, even if they're a stay-at-home mom and just have a life-changing event, maybe they lost weight or they've had a baby or just some epiphany they've had and they're like, okay, I want to um, change my wardrobe or change how I present myself to the world. Hmm. And what do you think, what do you find is the main reason that people come to you for your services? Well, I will say because they, you know, they potentially are starting a a business, so they need um, 
they need branding images, they need a headshot, or they have lost some weight and they just, they they have a transformation. And with that transformation, they need a new wardrobe. So that's where I come into play with talking to them about their goals, you know, personal goals, professional goals, um, their style. And sometimes they don't even know their style. So that's just a conversation when we're having that discovery call. That's when that comes out, what their style may be. And sometimes they're just open to different styles and sometimes they're not. I will say, though, when I have a discovery call with them and they're, you know, I ask some of these very poignant questions, if they're open to certain things, they're like, no. But then if we go shopping from in their home, looking through their wardrobe, they are open to it. They just have to see it. Sometimes, because people are visual, a lot of people are visual, you have to see it. And yeah. then you have that light bulb moment. Yeah. I could sense that, um, or I could see how this experience for somebody who is just getting into this could be a very vulnerable moment. Like, coming into someone's closet and discovering, trying to figure out their personal style or somebody that has lost weight and doesn't feel very comfortable in their skin. Like, how do you help determine a client's like personal style or help them, you know, yeah, figure out their style to begin with if they don't think they have one? Yeah. Well, first, I, I'd like to disarm them, if if you will. Um when I have that discovery call, a lot will come out, uh, whether it's um, nonverbal or verbally, on how they're feeling. Because when you are letting someone style you, letting them into your home, they are in a very vulnerable space. And I recognize that. So in that situation, you, you have to wear different hats. You have to be a psychologist, a psychiatrist in that area. So I keep that in mind. I'm like, well, okay, you have been gracious enough to allow me into your space. And I truly appreciate that because some things are going to come out. You have emotional ties to a lot of your clothes. You know, it may be a dress and it's like, oh, well, I, I still have this dress because this happened at a certain time in my life. So I want to keep it. Um, even though it may not be the best for their body type or it may not accentuate um, in the best light, but they're uh, they're tied to it because of a certain time in their life. So I have to keep that in mind too when I'm working with them. And doing so, once we go through all the questions um, that I have for my discovery call, that's when we decide what the style is, what their style is. And usually, you know, I can really see it quickly, yeah, you know, based on, you know, their their responses to the questions. How do you respond to clients that are um, very adamant about wearing a piece of clothing that may be ill-fitted or may not, you know? <laughs> um, you have to pick your battles for sure. So I try to compromise. I'm like, you know, this is a collaboration, so let's just work together. If it may not be the best for them, I'll just say, well, you know, maybe we can keep a few of these because you're still um, emotionally tied to it. So I don't want to just rip it away um, because that could be traumatizing. I want to pivot a little bit. How do you think that your, um, your craft has grown and evolved over the years? Wow. So, I mean, you're always, you're always learning and growing, you know, um, professionally, personally, and just, you know, with the clients I've worked with, um, it has allowed me to see, see me as a person too, and my style and how I interact with them. And, you know, be, whether it's, again, whether we're shopping or whether I'm in their closet, just working with all the different women and their personalities and their backgrounds and their expectations. 
Um, it's allowed me to tweak things um, that I need to tweak. You know, say maybe I'll approach someone a little differently if I've been shopping or did a, an audit um, and closet edit with one client. And maybe, you know, it didn't go as well as I, I thought it could have gone. So I think about it and like, well, maybe I could have done that a little differently. And then I will take that with the next client. It just depends on the client, you know, um, who they are, where they are um, in their life, you know, professionally and personally. And that just to see how I need to navigate that way. So I was reading that you've worked with the likes of Dillard's and Taylor Banana and Banana Republic as a style consultant. Um, can you tell us how you got to this level of your business and how you established those relationships? Well, um, you cannot get anywhere alone, <laughs> you know, with, in life or in your career. So I definitely pride myself on having collaborations and, and partnerships with people because um, that's how you get ahead. I mean, you learn from them as well. You can take away something from all of those partnerships. And that's what I've done, you know, working with, um, you know, hairstylists and makeup artists and photographers, videographers. I told you my sister's in the beauty space. She, she's a makeup artist and has an agency. So I've learned from all of those people as well. And that's helped me to grow um, and think about, you know, business and my craft in a different way, just to see their perspective and, and some of the things I can take away from um, how they navigate um, with their clients and, and, and their businesses. What is your role as a consultant for these brands? So with um, Ann Taylor and um, Dillard's, we have we have a partnership that, you know, um, bring in clients to their spaces. So pretty much, I guess, like an ambassador. So it's an ambassador, if you will. So I'm bringing clients to to their stores so that they can shop. I can shop with them. I can shop for them. And, you know, it's a win win situation. <laughs> So if I bring my clients who need, say they need an outfit, I think I sent you a picture of a doctor and she was with uh, Tracy Ellis Ross. So she came to me and she was like, I need a fabulous outfit because I'm moderating with Tracy Ellis Ross. And I couldn't say anything because it had not occurred yet. Mm -hmm. So we went to Ann Taylor. I was like, you know, I want to take her to Ann Taylor because I want to get her some vibrant color um, and one of the reasons I wanted to get her color is because she's petite and my goal was to make her look taller <laughs> while she was on stage and she was like I want to look professional but I want to look relevant and I want the students who are there to be like oh she looks stylish fashionable modern but still professional so I, I took that to heart and I went to Antil and I was like, well, I have a client coming in and they were like, okay, well, we'll be prepared. You know, do you want us to pull anything for you? Have anything in place for when you come and, you know, we can offer, you know, some discounts on the pieces as well. So I'm like, yes, that's a win-win. So bring the clients in for that. Yeah. Yeah. For people who are curious about getting into this type of work, um, wanting to be a stylist, like how, sorry, how uh, do you make a living um, being a stylist? Like where, where's most of your uh, income coming from? So um, from the clients, yeah. So I'm a big proponent of, you know, having multiple streams of income as well. So, you know, if you're working with your clients, especially if you're first starting out, it may, it's going to be a, a challenge unless you already have people you work with, you know, you just had not established a business, but you've done it like your side hustle. Um, so 
working with those clients and then working, you know, having those partnerships. So if you have partnerships, maybe it's with a media firm. So if you're working with a media firm, they'll have a bigger, bigger budget and maybe they work, you know, in the United States, maybe they work in the UK, maybe they work in different countries. So you can get um, income that way as well. But I'll definitely say have um, partnerships with, you know, other companies, if you will, um, agencies that can assist unless you just have a full roster of clients, especially um, higher earning clients. Because if you first starting off, you can't expect to say, okay, well, I'm going to charge this when you don't have that experience and you don't have that knowledge and you don't have the roster. Right. Um, so you're going to have to supplement it some type of way. So I would say to do it that way and, and just continue to build up your clientele until you can say, you know, if I don't want to, I don't have to work with these other um, companies or brands. For our listeners who are interested in changing, either changing their style or, you know, updating their wardrobe or looking for someone that could help with some guidance, um, what are some of the services that you offer? So I offer personal shopping. <laughs> and with the personal shopping, um, I could shop, I shop for the client. Um, I shop with the client. It, it just depends on what they're comfortable with. I found that a client can only go but so far when we're shopping. So maybe about three hours, that's it. And then I could see it. It, it starts to like wash over them. They're like, oh my gosh, I, they've totally tapped out. Yeah. So I don't, want, I don't want them to get to that point. And then they're just like, okay, I'm frustrated. I don't want to be here. I'm tired. So you never want them to get to that point because then they're just going to make not great decisions on what to purchase or what they may like, what they may be open to. Um, then I offer closet audits and edits where I go into their home. And that's, you know, an, 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 another piece of vulnerability um, because I'm coming into your space, your sanctuary. So you have to trust me. And with that, when I'm coming into your space, I'm looking at everything you have to see if it suits you and your style and where you are at this point, your lifestyle um, and your body type, if you're open to that. I always talk about body type um, because that's important. But again, if the client is very resistant to that, then I don't want to push that because I don't want to make them feel insecure or uneasy about it. Mm -hmm. So. You know, with the pieces, we'll try, we'll look through the clothes and see what they have. And the pieces that aren't serving them or they don't want any longer, then I donate them. So we do a purge of those pieces. Um, usually that will, you know, take about three hours too. And then they're just tapped out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so off of that, offer um, on set, on site um, branding and, and headshot. So I'm, you know, on set with the client to make sure everything is right for the camera because things look different on camera and on video. So if you're, if you need um, images, you know, whether it's and uh, still pictures or if it's video, um, I offer that service for on site and on set as well. One thing that I read in your bio that I thought was very interesting and really cool was uh, your philanthropic efforts and how you give back to the community. Um, I wanted to know if you could talk a little bit about that. Oh, absolutely. So growing up, my parents were all, they were about that. They were like, you know, a few things that were non-negotiables. And one was church every Sunday. It was Sunday school and then it was church service. So it's no question, it's no now I'm not going. You are going. And another thing was um, to be of service, you know, to help where you can, when you can, because that's one reason we're here. It's to help the less fortunate um, and to be of service. 
So with that, I, I like to give back. So I work um, with um, Girls for a Change some. I've worked with them some. Um, and I plan to work with them a little more. And Girls for a Change, they offer resources and tools to Black and brown girls. Um, and they start, they start with them pretty young. Um, and all throughout, you know, middle school, high school, and to college to get them there. Because the the founder, she was like, well, you know, we're at a disadvantage. So I want to prepare those girls for that, which is great. Um, I work with Premise Bank. Um, and Premise Bank has this program. And the, the uh, director who kind of formulated this and started this, his mom was a single mom. And he saw the struggles that she went through. So he was like, you know, once he got into a position of power that he wanted to use it for good. So he has a program where, um, and it's so great because they, these single moms, they go through, I believe it's, it's a six month program. And then at the end of the program, they can be hired by Premise Bank to start their oh. careers, but they get the training they need, the, the business development, the personal development. So, you know, I've worked with them and um, I work with my sister too. And we offer the, the hair and the, um, the wardrobe and the makeup. So when I do the wardrobe for them, we started off initially at different places. We did go to Dillard's at one point. But, you know, every program has, you know, parameters around it, around it. So now we do Dress for Success. Dress for Success is really good because they offer clothing, donated clothes to um, these cohorts that we work with, which is wow. great. And the last cohort that I worked with was about two weeks ago. I think it was about two weeks ago. They were like, it's unlimited, whatever they want. Wow. whatever they need so we went in and got all these pieces and they don't have to worry about clothes but wow. you know for this time that they're there where they're learning about banking and how they can better themselves moving forward in their career which is I, great no I love that that's so important and I, I think that having a good suit or having getting your hair done or, or makeup is so understated it's like, because that's what you're leading w with when you go into an interview or you're going into a new job. And I always, I was always taught on the belief that like, when you look good, you feel good, but in like, that's where, and, <laughs> and you do good. And so I think that that's, that's amazing that you're, it is, it is. And then similar to Ford Foundation, um, they offer that service to, um, for single moms and now single dads as well which is great because sometimes you don't think about the single dads out there because you know a lot of times the mom has the child and the children but they recognize that there are single dads too so they offer that as well um which is just another great nonprofit um to help people who really need it who really or need it and then um boots to suit so when i'm um do these closet audits and we do the purging, I will take some of the clothes to boots to suits. So boots to suits is for, you know, military, they've retired and now they're civilians. They need clothing to get back into the workforce. So the clothes that I get from the clients will sometimes go to them. Yeah. Because I have a lot of people um in my my family who are military. My right. youngest sister, she's um, retired from the Navy. So, yeah. Thank you so much for <laughs> this interview. This has been great, and I appreciate you sharing your story with us. Oh, thank you. So, yeah. I, like I said, I appreciate you having me on, you know, just to get it out there for people to think um, just a little bit differently. You know, I, sometimes people are like, well, Nitra. I'm sure you always have to dress up when you go out. I say, well, I like to dress up. That's just me. That's what I like to do, you know. But if I did it, I couldn't just run into the grocery store because that's when you see people, right? 
when you're dressed down, sometimes you feel like you're dressed down. That's when you see everyone. Yeah. And then they want to hold a conversation. <laughs> so you see them in the grocery store, like, I'm just going to go pick up, you know, just some fruit. And then you run into everyone and they want to have a conversation. And then they're like, well, I saw such and such. And, you know, she didn't look how she usually looks. <laughs> That's so that's so true. I yes. always I always get that uh from my friends. I'm I'm the person in my family as well. I am the person that gets dressed up to go to the grocery store. And I think prior to the pandemic, I I'd be caught I wouldn't be caught dead in sweatpants. Like I am a very I've I've just always like you. I've been always interested in fashion, but I've always been um and, and I think that there's space for both like the optics of things like you shouldn't really care at the end of the day people are gonna like you or they're not gonna like you uh it, and that shouldn't matter you be you but it is like at face value what people judge first is how you present yourself and so I think that that is extremely important and an extremely important lesson that you're teaching people but I also think that some people would love to know how to present themselves and how to like dress like according to their body or just for the role that they're looking for and really don't know what to do. And that's where you come in. And so I think that's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. And some, you know, some people just don't know um, that it's a, a service. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I try to educate and, you know, put myself and my business out there more so that more people will know. Of course, it's more prominent in, you know, like L.A. or New York. Right. Um, so, but here, um, you know, my name is my name is out there and, um, you know, building the brand more and more. So, you know, that's a great thing because when you go into spaces, when you network, because that's part of it, you have to network to, to grow your business. You just have to do that. And people are like, oh, yeah, I know who you are. Yeah. So, you know, partly that's that's ego, of course, but you're thinking, okay, well, yeah, I'm continuing to to grow my brand and and my business, and that's what it's about. You know, you're in business because you do have a passion for it too, and you love it, but you're in business too to make money. Yeah. <laughs> no. You know. Yeah. That's just the truth. Before I let you go, I want to play a game with. We're going to play a oh, rapid fire. Um, what is one lesson your job has taught you that you think everyone should learn at some point? In life? Um, that, oof, that we're all different. We all have uh, different expectations. That we all have battles that we're working on. And no one is immune from that. You could write a book. What would it be about and why? Oh, gosh. Um, if I could write a book, it would be about being your authentic self and ways that you can get there. Because I will say that sometimes in this line of business, because it's beauty, and sometimes it can be superficial. Sometimes we have masks on and we send our representatives. Uh, and it can be hard to just, you know, tear down that wall and let someone see you for the real you. Mm. So that's what I would do to just be who you are. Your 100%. authentic self. I love that. You are a stylist. Um, what would you? What do you recommend every client? Uh, an article of clothing that every client needs to have in their closet, no matter what. Oh, there are several, but a blazer. <laughs> I love that's blazer. a staple. That's a staple piece that yes. everyone should have: a blazer and a wrap dress. <laughs> oh, a wrap dress. Yes, that's a that's a good one. Um, What's something that we don't already know about you? <laughs> something that you already, well, already told you um, that I'm divorced. So that came up earlier. Yeah. 
Are you dating? Are you know? out in the fields? Are you? Am I dating? I'm not dating right now. And I will tell you why I'm not dating right now. Okay. I'm not dating because everyone I talk to who is dating, they say it's like trash. <laughs> so, I'm like, okay, well, let me just get my mind right. Yeah. Um, let me just get my mind right to, <laughs> to know that they're having a hard time. I just had that conversation with a friend. Yeah, like I'm, you know, I'm dating, and it's like, it's in. not good. It's not good. <laughs> Where can people find you? Um, they can find me on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, all under the Nishi Candle. N e e c h i c. Awesome, and my website too. My website is. Me chic styles with an S dot com. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us today. This was awesome. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. You know, I know time is so valuable <laughs> and I appreciate, you know, you having me on. Thank you, Anitra. That's it for this week's episode of A Bright Idea. Tune in each week as we interview entrepreneurs to find out their aha moment that launched their businesses. Today's episode featured Anitra Bird, owner of Nishi. You can support her business by going to nishiqstyles.com and following her on all platforms at Nishi. That's N-E-E-C-H-I-C. We're building a community of support here on A Bright Idea, so follow Niche Yeek on social media, give her a review, and tell all your friends. Until next week, I'm Amber Key.